The idea for submersible vehicles had been brewing in the minds of thinkers for several centuries, but it wasn't until 1897 that the first modern commissioned submarine was launched, USS Holland. Before the age of submarines, a vessel capable of cruising while submerged was only a fantasy. But when technology finally caught up and enabled the creation of the modern submarine, a visionary immigrant that wouldn't give up and received help from Irish revolutionaries became responsible for a new type of vehicle that would change the world forever. Holland 6 was commissioned long before World War I even broke out, but the U.S. Navy was ready to begin a new era of underwater warfare. Turn of the centuries. Going back to the 16th century, there's second-hand evidence that people dreamt of an underwater vehicle. In an article published in 1562 in Opusculum Thais Nieri, attributed to Tabir el Taisir, it reads, quote, Two Greeks submerged and surfaced in the River Tagus near the city of Toledo several times, in the presence of the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, without getting wet, and with the flame they carried in their hands still alight. Several other thinkers across the globe shared the same dream, like English mathematician William Bourne, who in 1578 recorded one of the first plans for underwater navigation vehicles. Roughly 20 years later, Scottish theologian John Napier would add that, quote, These inventions, besides devices of sailing underwater with divers, other devices and stratagems for harming of the enemies by the grace of God, and work of expert craftsmen I hope to perform. Still, the first submersible would not be designed until 1620, when Cornelis Drebbel, a Dutchman under the service of James I of England, built a rudimentary submersible craft propelled by oars. Many other similar ideas emerged during the 18th century. In England, for instance, over a dozen patents for several types of submersibles and submarine boats were granted. It was Nathaniel Simons who built the first known working example of the ballast tank, a design that used leather bags that could submerge a boat when filled with water. A revolutionary mechanism would then twist the bags and squeeze the water out, causing the submarine to resurface. Then, in 1775, American engineer David Bushnell invented the first military submersible. Turtle was a hand-powered, acorn-shaped craft with a single seat, capable of independent underwater operation. She was also the first ship to use screws for propulsion. However, the concept stagnated for the next century, as the needed technology for the operational use of submarines was still out of reach, lacking propulsion and stability altogether. There were many attempts to build submarines in France, Germany, and Britain throughout the 1800s, but it was during the American Civil War in 1864 that the Confederate Navy's H.L. Hunley became the first military submarine to sink an enemy vessel, destroying the Union's USS Housatonic. That said, Hunley did not survive the encounter, as the shockwaves from the gunpowder-filled keg on a spar that she launched as a torpedo claimed the lives of her crew, as well as her enemies. Two years later, the submarine concept became a potentially viable weapon when British engineer Robert Whitehead developed a locomotive or self-propelled torpedo that eliminated the risk of its predecessor. But it wouldn't be until later in the century that all the pieces would come together to form the U.S. Navy's first modern submarine. And it would all be thanks to one Irish immigrant, inventor, and self-taught engineer. Persistence John Philip Holland was born in 1841 in County Clare, Ireland, where he grew up to become an engineer and a mathematics teacher. In 1873, he migrated to the United States and continued teaching at a Catholic school in Patterson, New Jersey. But the engineer had higher ambitions, and in a fateful turn of events, he slipped in an icy street shortly after his arrival in America and broke a leg, an accident that forced him to rest. While he recovered in the hospital, he spent his time refining submarine concepts and his own designs. Then, in 1875, he submitted his proposals to the U.S. Navy. Though they were turned down as unworkable, the engineer didn't give up. In truth, it was Irish revolutionaries, the Fenians, who helped their fellow countrymen continue his research in the name of an independent Ireland, funding Holland's expenses. This allowed him to quit his teaching post and devote himself to creating a working submarine. By 1878, Holland had designed a prototype, the Holland I. However, after the development of the Fenian Ram submarine within the next three years, the organization and the inventor parted ways. Still, Holland kept experimenting on several designs, all of which were declined by the Navy. One of them was USS Plunger, an experimental boat that never became operational. Holland then participated in the Sea Services competition to present a capable underwater boat that demonstrated adequate submerged range, plus the capability to launch a torpedo, but as late as 1888, he kept being turned down. 
It wouldn't be until the engineer developed and self-financed a private venture called Holland 6 that he finally got the attention he craved. Holland 6 Holland 6 was a major breakthrough, as all the essential components were present in a single submarine for the first time. The craft featured dual propulsion systems, a fixed longitudinal center of gravity, and separate main and auxiliary ballast systems. Moreover, her profile was of a hydrodynamically advanced shape, and she was equipped with modern weaponry. On April 11, 1900, she was purchased by the U.S. government for the sum of $150,000. An early compact attack submarine, Holland 6 marked the official birth of the U.S. Navy's submarine program, leading to the 20th century. Notably, her inventor maintained powerful Irish-American friends in the government, helping to make his vision a reality. It is likely that without such support, the pre-war effort could have been dragged until reignited by the upcoming World War. Nevertheless, Holland 6 was launched long before the world even imagined the gruesome conflicts that would explode in the new century. The submarine was laid down in November of 1896 and launched in May of 1897 at the Crescent Shipyard at Elizabethport, New Jersey. Then, in 1900, she was officially added to the U.S. Navy inventory, becoming the first commissioned U.S. Navy submarine and the third officially operated in service. Shortly after, her designation was simplified and she adopted her inventor's name. The submarine never bore the SS-1 nomenclature, which was not introduced until much later in 1920. Characteristics. Even though Holland profiled a prototypical shape, she remarkably mimicked the lines that modern submarines still feature. Her hull had a teardrop shape, bulbous bow, and tapered stern. A propeller rested at the stern, as did the rudder assembly. And while she did not have a proper tower, Holland had a low-profile access hatch in the upper hull along an elevated section. Furthermore, she did not include dive planes on her sides. In terms of machinery, Holland was powered by an auto brand gasoline 45 horsepower engine for surface travel. And when submerged, she relied on an ED electric motor of 75 horsepower with a 66 cell Exide battery, while her propulsion system drove a single screw at the stern. Holland was capable of deep diving at 75 feet, and her range expanded to 40 nautical miles at a speed of 3 knots. On the other hand, her top speed was 5 knots when submerged and 8 knots on the surface. Furthermore, her displacement of 63 tons on the surface increased to 74 tons underwater. The submarine was 53 feet long, with a beam of 10 feet and a draft of 11.5 feet. Her nominal armament consisted of a single 18-inch torpedo tube and a Zelensky pneumatic cannon known as a dynamic gun for self-defense in close surface contacts. This cannon was removed later on. Service Life on October 16, 1900, Holland was towed to Annapolis, where she began her service as a training submarine. She also provided extremely valuable data for submarines already under construction. Then, in January of 1901, she conducted a 166-mile surface run from Annapolis to Norfolk, providing valuable knowledge about her performance over an extended period. Except for the summer of 1901, when she trained cadets at the Naval Torpedo Station in Newport, Holland spent her career training Naval Academy cadets, officers, and enlisted men in this new type of underwater warfare at Annapolis. Then, after July 17, 1905, she finished her career at Norfolk, never having been pressed into combat. Even for her time, Holland's overall performance was highly lacking. Her primitive technology was a hazard for the crew, presenting risks of explosion or asphyxiation in an era when there were close to non-existent safety measures in undersea travel. Besides, her internal conditions were significantly cramped for her complement of six due to plenty of exposed inner workings. Nonetheless, she served her purpose for her time and age, and in November of 1910, her name was struck from the Naval Register. Still, Holland's ultimate fate remains unclear. She was reportedly sold for scrap in 1913 to Henry A. Hitner & Sons, Philadelphia, who were required to put up a $5,000 bond in assurance of the submarine not being used as a ship again. Two years later, she was delivered to a scrap metal dealer, but on her way to the shipbreakers, Holland was given a last-minute reprieve and was later taken to Philadelphia, Atlantic City, and New York for an exhibition tour. By 1924, Holland was supposedly owned by the Museum of Peaceful Arts and displayed at Starlight Park in the Bronx. Then, in 1930, she was sold again for $100 and scrapped at last. Holland eventually influenced the design of several other early submarines, beginning with the British Royal Navy's Holland I, but also the first undertakings in Japan. 
Moreover, she inspired Holland's Plunger-class submarines, which became America's first fleet of underwater vessels. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. And don't forget to let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And for more stories from the military annals, subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels. Stay tuned.